Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video we have our first Duna contract. It's not to fly by Duna, it's not to orbit Duna, it's to build a new orbital station around Duna. Which I guess the system has figured out that I like building stations, I suppose. Especially stations with these specs, antenna, docking port, generate power, supporting five Kerbals and a viewing cupola. So we've got another one of these, but finally we've got a Duna station. And uh, even though we have other things to do around EVE still, I believe we will just go ahead and see if we can do the Duna station first. And maybe we'll get further Duna contracts like that. So, taking a look at our orbital situation, I think we'll get to the Duna window next. Let's see. Some might know it. I do have it on 24 hours. That's because I copy my settings file from uh, install to install so that I don't have to reset my joystick. All right, so the Duna window is first, but we've only got a little bit of time until the EVE window. So maybe we'll send an EVE mission as well. The, after all, the Duna mission isn't going to be that suspenseful. We're going to send the same kind of station that we've done before on the same launcher. Oh, wait. Um, now we've got more Duna things. Position a satellite in synchronous orbit of Duna. Okay, and build new orbital station around Ike with 7,500 electric charge, 9 Kerbals. Huh. Uh, should I have the same station and just move it, or should I send two different stations? That's a good question. Okay, well now we have more to do at Duna, so maybe we'll just focus on that. I just noticed that the science day from Surface of Eve contract has not been fulfilled even though I thought we did that. So let me just check, maybe it didn't save the state properly at the end of that. Indeed, we haven't uh, apparently done the Science Junior yet, and uh, now we're in the dark again. Let's rectify this situation again. Okay, we definitely finished that. Okay, now it reads the contract complete. Okay, we are done here, and now the contract's fulfilled. I really want to build proper space stations, and that means using the docking port senior, but we'd need to unlock the VAB to get that, and we don't really have enough science. We need to get this composites first, and then metamaterials. Let me see, how much was the... Oh, sorry, not the VAB, the R&D building. We technically have enough money. So, I'll unlock it. Maybe we'll research heavier rocketry now. And I'll get composites, but we ultimately have to save up for metamaterials. I'm gonna change up our docking port plan here. From EVE Mission 2. And of course we don't need to have this complication here this time. I don't know if it's a good idea to have the controller hidden by the docking port. I guess we'll leave a little bit of space where I can click it. I'll put some docking port juniors under the windows here. And perhaps we want better solar panels because Duna is further away from the sun. So we'll have four of these. And actually these spark engines can now just go lower since we're not attaching to the bottom directly anymore, the bottom of the tank. So, working on the satellite, it needs a science junior and a thermometer too. Well, that allows for a certain variation. Okay, so let's say we go like that for now, but I think I'm gonna change that, and we're gonna route to the core here. Take this tank off, and we need an adapter there isn't really a fueled adapter that has the form factor I want. I want one that can adapt to the Science Junior. This is too long though. I want something a little bit shorter. Uh, where's that? Is this the one? Yeah, that's the one. Um, we can maybe move these up a little bit so they don't clip that. Okay, and then the Science Junior. Hmm. I wanted to put the solar panels on the science junior, so maybe I'll still keep these thrusters up here. 
It's a little bit weird. What we're going to do is we have the thrusters up there and the solar panels here. And the thrusters aren't going to be blowing at the solar panels at least. I'll throw some goo containers. Oh, we might as well have the one goo container and one magnetometer boom, right? Um, I don't like that the magnetometer boom is going to be blasted at, but we'll just promise not to use the thrusters while we're using the magnetometer. I think we only, we're going to need more power than this. We've had that experience before. We don't have super huge batteries. And when it comes down to putting that 7,500 electric charge on the Ike station, we're going to have a bit of a problem with that. We're going to have to have a lot of these little guys. And I guess we'll use the fact that the mass is probably applied to the part that they're attached to and just put the thermometer and barometer on the Science Junior on this side. Okay, so we have more battery life, we have the solar panels, we have all the business. So we want a stack separator to connect it to the station. So, but I'll also save this as a Duna Sat 1. Oh, that fits. Uh, so maybe we'll do the Ike station separately, or maybe we should launch it on here. That's the question. What else do we need? We need the power, and we need four more Kerbals, which is in our hitchhiker storage container. But then we're going to have to move the station from Duna orbit to Ike orbit. So that's 1,600, 3,200. Um, the RCS ports are going to be blowing at the battery pack. So, we're going to put these down here. Not that we need RCS ports. But it might be better to have them. So we're going to put them here so they're not blowing at the solar panels either. And do not seem to be blowing at anything else. And we're going to put a set up here so that they can also do translation properly. Quite an expense, I guess. Yeah, they're 550 each. Those are only 80. So technically, having 75 of these would be cheaper than having the number of these that we're going to end up having. But I think we don't want to have 75 of those little ones. Okay, so that should be 8,000 units of power. We've got 20 battery packs with 400 each. Viewing cupola. Nine Kerbals. Verify. No jab. <laughs> and uh, we'll have to move it to orbit of Ike. So, taking a look at this situation. You know, uh, I could just put a docking port. Oh, and that's not a stack separator. That's a decoupler. We could put a docking port there, and but that would cover up that window. That's the only thing. It'd be more useful to have a docking port there. I think I'm going to even though it's not the most pleasant thing to cover up the window. It's just more useful. And then we don't even need a separate stack separator that's going to become space junk. Okay, so that's 1,619 meters per second. when we get there and I want to disable crossfeed here. Oh, with this it's only 551. That's not a whole lot, is it? How does it how is it 1600 when Hold on. No, it's 1600 without that. I'm surprised it's only 500 with that. I don't think we need this little extra decoupler. We can just use the docking port to separate from that. I think we'll try it out and see if we have too little. It's possible. It's expensive though. We're at 205.8 tons, 98 parts. 
SAS on, throttle up, and launch. A very capable rocket. I feel like I've not auto strutted enough, but we'll see. We are past the speed of sound, and the situation is nominal. Booster set. Okay. We went a little bit steep. Again, this stage is going to transfer us over to Duna as well. That's the plan. The Delta V we were looking at was for capture. It might help with capture too. No, I don't think so. Maybe. Maybe it'll help with capture too. Bearing. Okay, uh, we'll coast a little bit here. Okay, that's pretty high. 111 by 94. And we've got 1,800 left almost. Let me get all the things out. I don't think we've unlocked the VAB for the regular action groups. I know I could put these things on some of the other action groups, but it's all right. First time going away from the sun. Uh, not quite a Holman transfer if we wait till there. But we get an encounter, so I guess that's the important part. It's not a horrible tangency. Uh, we'll need a mid-course adjustment, probably. So our satellite has to get into that orbit. And that's a retrograde orbit. So, fun, fun, fun again. It looks like I can correct out most of the inclination without costing too much. We certainly want to be initially in a very Ike-like orbit. Okay, well that's not a huge inclination difference. And that's probably a good start. Let's see, how much would it take to capture now? Doesn't feel like a whole lot, and there's another Ike encounter. Ike encounters aren't exactly the toughest thing to get. So that's just 520. Okay, anyway, we'll do this initial burn here. I mean, we probably want to station around Duna eventually, but maybe we want a better station with the senior docking ports instead of just what we've got right now. This is more of an Ike station. But we'll get the Duna station contract done, of course. Let's make sure we seem to have everything. And go. Oh, uh, it's wandering. Okay, well, and it was a finicky sort of thing too. Well, I don't need that orbit node. We don't seem to have an encounter even right now. Let's see. Sure wanders a lot, SAS does. Okay, uh, stop there. Hmm... I think that's okay. Do we still get the... We've got 722 left in this stage. So as long as we can... Use that to capture, that's fine. So here, rip, right there, we've got a nice little transfer over to Ike as well. So what we're going to do is... We'll stop the engine short of that, so that it reads the orbit around Duna first, and then continue the burn after that. So that will be the way we go. And yep. Yeah. Uh, we'll plop off the satellite at the high orbit. That's the plan. Because then it can change its inclination better. Uh, we probably want to crash the stage into Ike if possible. Well, we're a little bit stretched on communication now. 58%. But Kerbin's all the way there, so I guess it's not too bad a result. I 
stop. Uh, do we have that ike encounter still? We're supposed to have an initial ike encounter. I guess we should do some science. Do some science while the sciencing is good. Log pressure data. Transmit. We have plenty of charge, so. Uh, temperature. Transmit. Not the mystery goo, but yes, barometer. Not uh, magnetometer, I mean. Magnetometer. Transmit 99 science. And maybe we should just do the science junior and the goo right now, but maybe we'll do it after we've captured into, or, uh, into the designated orbit. It'll still be high over Duna at that point. We'll get some Ike signs too on the initial pass. That'll be good. But we won't go get low over Ike, not from that periapsis. Okay, so we have our first Ike encounter. You can see the second Ike encounter that we're aiming for as well. But first things first. Temperature, transmit. Pressure, transmit. Magnetometer. So again, we're aiming for the big docking ports with this because we're in a station building sort of deal. Contract system has profiled us, I guess. So our communication line is going that way. It looks fine. Probably won't be blocked by Ike or anything. And not, not Duna either. Full view of Duna. We're at just the right height where it fits. I mean, if not for the altimeter at the top and the uh, nav ball at the bottom would fit the screen pretty much perfectly. Retrograde is down here. <laughs> it's over here. Good thing I gave it some minutes to turn. It doesn't seem to be turning to the right spot. Let me give it a little bit of help here. Okay, and burn. But we're at partial thrust. I just want to capture first. Now we're at full thrust. Uh, we're wobbling though. Gosh, SAS. Is it like an option to have a competent SAS? The old stiff uh, SAS will be fine, to be honest. Okay, before we get an Ike encounter, let me stop there and maintain stability for... Uh, oh yeah, that's not that. Um, this one. Okay, we got the orbital station around Duna. Fine. Uh, plop off the satellite. Um, let's go normal temporarily. Or just a little bit of an angle. Okay. Off goes the satellite. Okay, now we should be relaying through the satellite. We clear? We clear. Alright. Keep burning. Uh, that, I guess we messed it up somehow. Let's see. Let me get rid of the plot and see. Okay, there's an encounter. We wanted an inclined orbit. Right now it is in an inclined orbit like this. Uh, it's in a polar orbit. I guess that's not bad. They didn't specify an orbit. We can always change it. It's got enough delta V. Um, what we want to do is eventually crash the stage into Ike. Let's see. It doesn't take that much, so we'll do that when we get there. Okay, so this is on its way, 10 hours. I think we should just focus on it rather than doing this part just yet. It's actually after a full orbit around Duna that we encounter it. Okay, stage disposal burn. First thing we're do we're gonna do with Ike is bombard it. To be honest, I think it's used to it. When you take a look at it. Okay. That is set up and decouple. And now we have to go the other way. Stop breaking our panel. Panels by smashing into the stage. 
SAS, you know, someday you're going to actually do something, SAS. I wait for that day. Okay, and activate engines. Oh, it used the fuel here. No. Uh-oh. Uh, okay, well, we still have the monopropellant. It was using the fuel there. That doesn't look like it's safe. Oh, no, that that's fine. Okay. How much is it going to take to capture? It shouldn't take too much. It's bending our orbit like crazy. It's going to take 100. I think the mob propellant will be good enough. But we have to watch for our communication line. It's going that way, so actually this is fine. Let me start the RCS burn. And then right at periapsis we'll use... Well, maybe we don't need to use the fuel that we have. We'll see. Okay. Well, we're pretty much at periapsis and we haven't really captured yet. So I'll use some thrust. Okay, that's a capture. I guess we... Well, let's use the RCS still to bring it down more. Just in case. We don't need that anymore. And it's already registered us as uh, orbit orbital station around Ike. I just want the orbit to be a little bit nicer. Okay, I think I'll take 300 kilometers on the apoapsis side. And we'll boost up the periapsis just a bit. Just in case there are some unpleasant bumps. We'll call it 330. 300 apoapsis, 30 periapsis. Okay, that's fine and maintain stability and this is done now the little satellite okay satellite has the things it just needs to reach this retrograde orbit why they want retrograde orbits more often than anything else I have no idea now we're not a very good match for that orbit just yet but at the apoapsis we could probably hit that ascending node which also means that from apoapsis we can probably do a pretty good flip and if we lean towards where that descending node is and the, now Ike is gonna complicate matters it looks like that that end is really close to Ike this orbit is really bad <laughs> it's very Ike uh, yeah, this is a tough one because of Ike. It's Ike adjacent, if you will. We're going to have to make sure that when we get into the orbit, we're nowhere near Ike, and that's hard. Okay, well, that's the first correction. At least for this orbit, we aren't encountering Ike, so that's a start and go uh, the flipping is always disorienting all the little markers are sliding away oh no there's more than one Ike encounter there's one there and one there okay hold on so we've got an Ike problem he'll flatten our orbit again if we encounter it so I'm going to go retrograde and just bring us down first, away from Ike. Even though that's not going to match very well with what we're supposed to be doing. So now we're not encountering Ike. But we're in line. In theory, we're not encountering Ike. But at least its gravitational influence won't kill us or anything and then we'll put the pull the apoapsis down and hope we don't encounter Ike on that side but temporarily we have a faster orbit because we're lower was that the designated mm, apparently not um, oh there we go we're on the designated orbit just maintain stability phew all right 
All right, that one's done. So successful triple mission at Duna. Let's do the material study high over Duna. We could reposition it. It's got a lot of Delta V. I think we should do a little bit more with it. We haven't done low over Duna. And we could probably move it over to Ike and do low over Ike as well. Yeah, we've done all the things here. Okay, so rather than... Uh, yeah, we've already done high over Ike, so we don't need that encounter. Let me go retrograde here. We want 550 science, after all, to get those big docking ports. Especially if they keep giving me these station contracts. Our jewel station needs big docking ports. So what would be low over Duna or near Duna? Well, that's just outside of its atmosphere, so we'll try that. Okay, thermometer. Yes, near Duna. 138 signs for magnetometer. Yeah, do we have enough charge? I think we do. Yes, just barely. Okay, now contriving an Ike encounter that will bring us low over Ike even though we're retrograde with respect to Ike. So that's interesting. That's a lot of lines. I've got all those patched conic things. Maybe we'll just get the encounter and then force it in its SOI. How much would that cost? Eh, it's, I mean, we've got it. We have the science though now, particularly thanks to the magnetometer. Okay, burning for Ike. It's mostly an inclination burn. Gonna go out and then delay long enough to hit Ike over here. Oh, now we've got an Ike encounter that's looking good actually, because it's polar. It's not straight retro. Yeah, we'll see. I might want to get into orbit around Ike. Since we have the station around Ike, we might as well have the relay around Ike too. Okay, so first I want to ensure that we get close to Duna. Oh, sorry, Ike, so that we can get the near Ike science. And then let's see if we can capture into a low orbit around Ike. That seems doable. And we actually want to boost the periapsis up so that we're not obscured by Ike so often. Maybe a uh, Molnia orbit or something around Ike would be good. Anyway, so that sequence. Okay, there's Ike. So, capturing burn. And that should be good enough. Magnetometer. Uh, near Ike confirmed. Transmit. Logging temperature. Transmit. And logging pressure. Transmit. Alright, it's all done. So, we'll just boost up that periapsis so that it's got a better view of things. And then we'll, we'll, we will be done here and we will triumphant, triumphantly unlock the senior docking port. So, polarish satellite around Ike, station around Ike, nothing around Duna, actually. But we like Ike. Do you like Ike? I like Ike. Let's go to the tech tree. So, metamaterials, here we come. We've got the docking ports. We've got a whole lot of other parts that I don't actually need, but we've got docking ports. So, let us take a look at our contracts to get a hint of what we're doing next time. Oh look, new orbital station around Duna. Needs pilots though, but otherwise fairly s simple. Duna stone, so if we're gonna send pilots over and they're gonna have this Duna stone contract, maybe we should be landing on Duna. So we'll grab that, grab Duna stone, 
Grab satellite. Oh, what's the Duna ejecta? Oh, that's on Ike. Oh, that, that's getting complicated now. So, we've sort of left those tourists around Eve. We'll see. We'll see which one we do next time. It could be the Eve one, and we'll get the tourists back and fulfill the Eve contracts. Or we could do the Duna ones. It'll depend on which one is uh, comes first. There's this module from Orbit of Ike. I mean, we could do that later. I'll pick it up anyway. But I don't think it'll be part of our most immediate missions. And this is a more complicated... This isn't interplanetary, so I'm not interested anymore. Anyway, we've got those seven contracts. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.